Jesus Christ living in us, you are our gladness forever. You are the truth, the light. Hallelujah. Now as it was for all the ages to come. Jesus Christ, living in us, you are our gladness forever. You are the life for Christ. Hallelujah. One who abides in you forever shall live. Jesus Christ, living in us, you are our gladness forever. Jesus Christ, living in us, you are our gladness forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, hearty welcome to the Eucharist once again. Uh, today is the feast of uh, Our Lady, um, since that uh, dedication of St. Mary Major. So it used to be called Our Lady of the Snows. The elderly ones might remember there was a different feast. Uh, it's the feast of the dedication of the Basilica in Rome to Our Lady. It's the biggest basilica uh, dedicated to Our Lady in the world. Uh, let's begin this Eucharistic sacrifice, uh, putting ourselves in God's presence, asking His forgiveness for our sins, that you might, be, might receive Him more worthily. And so we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done, what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Pardon the faults of your servants, we pray, O Lord, that we who cannot please you by our own deeds may be saved through the intercession of the mother of your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Can you sit for the reading? A reading from the book of Numbers. In those days, the people of Israel, the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month, and the people stayed in Kadesh. And Miriam died there and was buried there. Now there was no water for the congregation, and they assembled themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people quarreled with Moses and said, Would that we had perished when our brothers perished before the Lord? Why have you brought the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness, that we should die here, both we and our cattle? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? It is no place for grain or figs or wines or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. Then Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the entrance of the tent of meeting and fell on their faces. And the glory of the Lord appeared to them, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the staff and assemble the congregation, you and Aaron your brother, and tell the rock before their eyes to yield its water. So you shall bring water out of the rock for them and give drink to the congregation and their cattle. 
and Moses took the staff from before the Lord as he commanded him. Then Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels, shall we bring water for you out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock with his staff twice, and water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank and their livestock. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe me to uphold me as holy in the eyes of the people of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I have given them. These are the waters of Meribah, where the people of Israel quarreled with the Lord, and through them he showed himself holy. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Your response is, O that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts together. O that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come into his presence giving thanks. Let us hail him with a song of praise. Your response? O that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. O come, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Your response? O oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. O oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, and on that day at Massa in the desert, when your forebears put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. Your response? O oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Kindly rise as we prepare our hearts for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, the others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. For at that time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes, and be killed. On the third day be raised. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers, in the first reading from Numbers, it's, I was telling you that it's the Old Testament, the fourth book of the Old Testament. It's the whole continuing the journey of uh, 
the Jewish people to the promised land. They were from Egypt, coming back. Genesis is the beginning, creation. I told you about the first 11 chapters and afterwards. Then there's Exodus, where they uh, get out of uh, Exodus, coming out, Exodus, uh, coming out of Egypt. Uh, then Leviticus, where they are under the leadership of the, of the Levites and going, going ahead. Numbers this continues this journey, and uh, we'll begin soon with Deuteronomy. We are ending our uh, excursion in this book of Numbers. And we have here, uh, it's the same story over again. Human nature is the same. They keep on grumbling because they didn't have food, they didn't have water. Uh, and it's the second time. That if you remember the very beginning, they were grumbling that oh, we are, why you brought us here and uh, we could have had, they even mentioned cucumber and leeks and garlic uh, the, and onions, which they said we can't get in the desert, no onions. Uh, imagine how important onions are. And uh, now they come, they said, now there's no water, what are we to do? Once again, Moses, uh, the Lord shows his presence continuously. Moses once again uh, prays to the Lord and he says, uh, okay, go to the rock hit the rock and the water comes. That happened before. Once again, God intervenes miraculously to give the people water. You see the, the Lord continuously accompanying. And I want to say, uh, the old Israel, the Jewish people preparing for the coming of Jesus, and as we reflect on the gospel, we realize that the new Jewish people, the new Israelites, the new Israel is the church, the church of Jesus, disciples of Jesus, the body of Jesus, and God as he guides guided Israel we pray that God continues to guide the church also helping it continuously in all moments of difficulty to overcome them and to be faithful to him and to be what Jesus wants the church to be and uh, we pray for the church also uh, in the gospel we have Peter really this gospel every gospel passage has got so much of theology and when I when we read this I found so much over here uh, who, who do people say the son of man is? And, and they said, oh, people are saying, you're John the Baptist who's come again, was killed, who's uh, reborn. And then they said Elijah, because Elijah was supposed to come uh, before. The, so they said, you're the one, other Jeremiah, the one who, the great prophet who had uh, told them what was wrong. But, and then Jesus asked him, but you, what do you all say about, he asked him. And see, once again, Peter replies uh, on behalf of the others. He's always the, like the spokesperson. And he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Tremendous act of faith, my sisters and brothers. It's not, uh, he's teaching them, a master is there, rector, suddenly to tell them that you are Christ. Means, uh, uh, it's a leap of faith, I would think. And Jesus gives us an indication uh, that, he says, it's not flesh and blood. You didn't hear from other people. It's my father who's revealed it to you. My father inspired you. And uh, uh, I think, I mean, one possibility, that uh, this was an indication to Jesus of who was got to be the leader of the group, who was got to be the one who would be the f center point, focal point for his new community, the church. And he says, you are Peter. Uh, the word Peter doesn't sound like rock. The word Petros means, the rock and means, that the word Petros and Pet Peter mean the same. It means rock. And uh, so in English, we can't fully understand why Jesus said, you are Peter, on this rock I will build the church. Uh, if we had to, if we were allowed to change, we would have said, you are rock, and on this rock I will build a church. That really is the way it was um, understood by the Jews, because the word Petros means rock. And Jesus, uh, thoughts of theology I was saying, he says that uh, you are the Christ, and Jesus accepts that he's the son of the living God here. And he says, now don't tell anybody about this. That means you're right, but keep it, it's not, this is not the right time to reveal it. Uh, it's not, I'm not yet ready to reveal it. Uh, then again, he says, uh, uh, Jesus, when he talks about uh, uh, Peter objects, he says, no, this, this is what God wants. You are not thinking about as uh, God thinks. You have here again, Jesus establishing in a way his church. He says, you are Peter, I will build my church. The beginning of his thinking of a community which would follow him, a community of faithful who would follow him and continue his mission of spreading God's kingdom, of being, making the kingdom of the, the Father present, being the face of Jesus on earth. Uh, so then you are, the, you are the church, I will build my church on you. 
And uh, we pray for the Holy Father, who is the successor of Peter. Uh, there's an unbroken line from uh, St. Peter to Pope Francis. We trace it in history. Uh, if you go to, I think, St. John's Lateran, you find the figures of all the popes. And there's a, some more space for the more popes to come out afterwards. So they've said this, there's lots of space. They've planned all that. And then afterwards, again, you see sisters and brothers. Interestingly, he says that he's beginning to tell them that he's going to, going to suffer. It's a completely different concept. For them, the Messiah will come and will lead the people. He'll fight with the Romans, liberate us. We'll have everything uh, good. He says he will have to be, go to Jerusalem, suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed. On the third day be raised. Absolute prediction. They, yet, uh, they, they, they've forgotten all this later on when it actually happens. So Jesus is beginning now uh, to remove the veil. First of all, his divinity. That you are the Christ, son of the living God. Peter did not understand what he, what he was saying, I think. It was an inspiration, uh, but, but he said it. And now he says, no, he's got to go suffer. And we'll see what happens. Uh, tomorrow you have the... A feast of the uh, transfiguration really it's a uh, illumination to the people uh, that this is God and so here we have once again uh, Jesus revealing himself more and more and let's uh, uh, my sisters and brothers uh, let these masses these gospels these readings help us to understand the person of Jesus to love the person of Jesus like we joined the apostles and disciples who were following Jesus. We are with them, listening to Jesus' words, allowing it to transform our lives. I was saying that today is the feast of our lady. It's a, it's a minor feast. There's no Gloria. It's not a minor feast. But it's the feast of uh, our lady. Before it was to be called our lady of the snows. Uh, and because the tradition is that uh, there's no written uh, proof 100% but it's the tradition believed by many that uh, there was a uh, I think his name was John a big uh, patriarch or a big uh, soldier who had a lot of money wanted to build a picture a statue, a statue or some memorial of Our Lady and he got a dream that he should build a church uh, and, and uh, he, the dream according to the tradition the legend is that uh, where the snow would fall and then uh, the Pope, Liberius, also got the same dream, that he should build a church where the snow would fall. And so the, that between, uh, on this night, uh, between the 4th and the 5th, that night in the night, the snow fell on one of the mountains, one of the hills of Rome, Esquiline. And uh, it was covered with snow. And so the Pope had that same vision, this uh, whatever soldier or politician had the same. And so he gave the money, the Pope designed it, and this church was built, Liberius. Uh, later on, uh, in uh, 431, there was the Council of Ephesus uh, where they discussed a lot about uh, uh, our, our Lady and she was proclaimed the Mother of God. And so for the 432, this big basilica now, which is there, was built on the same day. On this dedicated on today. That's why it's called Memorial. It's called Our Lady of Snows, but now they call it Dedication of uh, St. Mary Major. Major because in the Western Church, it's the biggest church of Our Lady in the world. The biggest church. Of, it's big, very big and dedicated to Our Lady by Mary Major. One of the four major basilicas, uh, when we go to Rome, bishops go for the Ad Limina, official visit. They're supposed to visit the basilicas. St. John, St. Peter's naturally, St. John, St. Paul outside the wall. And also Mary Major. Uh, I've gone there several times to pray. Also officially when we go for Ad Limina. This, brothers and sisters, is uh, a lot of devotion to Our Lady. And uh, well, I won't give you all the stories. But the Pope, Pope Francis, got great devotion. And uh, I remember the day he was elected Pope, uh, the next morning, uh, he, he, he was staying in one of the places where the priests stay. Uh, I stay that that place often. Uh, and uh, so he had thought, he said he wanted to go to pay his bills and bring his things. So he took the car and he went straight, f before going to that place, he went straight to this, this basilica. And he goes there often. Even now, after, his opera before, after the operation, 
from the hospital, he went straight to this basilica, Mary Major, to pray to Our Lady, great devotion to Our Lady, pray to her to thank her. Before every trip abroad, uh, I've noticed that he goes there and prays. So we pray to Our Lady also to help us uh, to be true disciples of Jesus. God bless each one of you. Keep well. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness with this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. divinity humbled himself to share in our humanity blessed are you Lord God of all creation to your goodness with this wine which we offer you fruit of the wine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink blessed be God forever Lord God we ask you to be pleased receive the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite hearts Lord wash away my iniquity cleanse me from my sins Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request may be made in vain. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all your saints, especially as we celebrate the Feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to ends earths, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty, rejoices in your presence forever, May our voices, we pray, join with theirs, one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be quested on a life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence the Father in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin, safe from all distress. To wait in blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. the sign of peace, Christ's peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Don't only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, 
O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we, who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary, may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a lovely day, Thursday, lovely day, and uh, we're approaching the end of the week so fast. Uh, tomorrow we'll have, uh, I, I'll see you on Saturday for Mass, but tomorrow we'll have a familiar face once again saying Mass. It was, uh, it's Father Leon Vegas, my, who was secretary uh, till a few months back, and he's going to, no, I think he's from Amboli, but uh, they tell me that he might, uh, he might come here to, so you might not see Amboli Church, but you'll see him. And the coming again, coming, I uh, must alert you, on Saturday, uh, 7th, uh, Sunday is clergy day, so we pray for the priests. But Saturday, uh, the CCBI, the bishops of uh, India, have organized a prayer service for all those who are suffering from corona to pray for the victim, pray for the country, uh, pray for the dead, for the healing of the sick, it's in comfort for the relatives. And it's, it's a lovely prayer service. I. Uh, Sort of, they're preparing it, and they'll begin it with that Mount Mary's one prayer there, or one hymn there, I think. Then they'll, you'll have, it's one hour, 8.30 to 9.30, a little late, I know, for some of you. But uh, it'll be on the YouTube, Archdiocese of Bombay. And I, I've been told that all the major Catholic TV channels in India will show it. So I, I, I encourage you to watch it, uh, to participate. 8.30 to 9.30 on Saturday, the after tomorrow. Prepare yourselves, dinner before or dinner after or dinner during. Uh, God bless you. Have a lovely evening, lovely day, and we'll pray for each other. And Feast of Our Lady, so pray to her. God bless. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, you are my salvation. Jesus, you're my inspiration. Jesus, you're the treasure of my life. Jesus, you offer new sight to the blind, healing the crippled, the deaf and the mute, cleansing the leper and banishing ills, raising the dead to life. Jesus, you are my salvation, Jesus. You're my inspiration, Jesus. You're the treasure of my life. 
Jesus, you nurture the hungry with bread, stilling the tempest and calming the sea, turning life's water to glittering wine, shedding your blood for me. Jesus, you are my salvation. Jesus, you're my inspiration. Jesus, you're the treasure of my life.